Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm in the shop, obviously. There's a giant hurricane, Dorian, hanging out in the Atlantic right now, just absolutely hammering uh, the, the, the Bahamas. My heart goes out to those poor folks. I spent a lot of time in the Outer Islands, in the Abacos and uh, Eleuthera and Cat Island as a youth, just surfing and chilling. And I know there's a lot of regular folks out there uh, with regular jobs and regular houses that are just really getting hammered. So if you can help after all this, certainly do so. In the meantime, I'm just hanging here waiting for this hurricane to hopefully take a right-hand turn. I'm in the north part of Florida and there's still a chance that we might see some really bad weather. But today I'm going to talk about silicon molds. Mostly about how to make some decisions on when you're going to make them, what material to use, how to make them last longer, and the ways they actually start to fail, and how you can do a few things to prevent that. So stick around. So first, let's talk a little bit about planning your mold and the material you're going to use. Now I'm using uh, silicone from Smooth On. I've used a bunch of different uh, manufacturers and I haven't really found any difference in durability. What really affects durability, how long your lure mold lasts, is the hardness of the material and how you actually cast it. Silicone is rated on the Shure hardness scale. What I found to be the best for lure making is Shure 14A and that's sort of like rubber band hardness but I'll go ahead and put uh, a little scale photo up right here so you can take a look at it. What happens when you go harder than 14A is the silicone becomes harder and less stretchy, uh, less pliable and is more apt to start to crack on you. So failure mode one is if your mold is too hard. If that silicone is too hard, you'll tend to get cracked. This is a mold I cast in one piece. It was a little bit of an experiment for me. I usually do two-piece molds, but I cast it in one piece, cut out a zigzag line to separate the two halves, and then cut my own sprue at the end. And I should also note, this is a, about an 18A, and you can see that there's cracking right in the deep spot of these cuts, and they, they propagate into the lure body right there. But the other way these silicon molds can fail is just through aging and oxidation. Uh, just exposure to the air, exposure to the chemicals that you're pouring into them, uh, whether it's the high heat of uh, soft plastics or these fast-acting, uh, fast-setting resins, you'll end up getting the surface of the inside of the mold starting to harden on its own just from oxidation and reaction. And you'll start getting little micro failures. And those micro failures end up looking like little divots. And little by little, the, your castings start to pull off tiny bits. Here's a perfect example. Mold uh, is probably cast about 100 lures. But you can see, if you look closely, that these little divots, the tiny little holes, start to create cracks. And while this mold is still usable, it still have a lot more work after I cast it because I've got all these divots and it's only a matter of time when this just starts getting so rough it's not worth casting in it. A while back I posted a video on a couple of things not to do when you pour in your mold and one of them was that you should not pour two different manufacturers of silicones on the same uh, lure mold. And the reason is each one has a different amount of volatile solvents in it uh, that slowly gas off and the shrinkage is different. So on this one you can see that the top one has shrunk quite a bit more and you can see it creates a little bit of a curve. So after you've made all the right decisions on the right softness, the right type of casting method, which I highly recommend whenever possible to do a two-part mold. Now you've got a good mold, you need to take care of it. Let me show you what I do. Because your lure ages and accelerates in aging because of exposure to like harsh chemicals and even just dirt and grime. So to wash the lures, all I do is use a real mild uh, dishwashing soap. This is Dawn and if you live in the southern U.S. you know that they, everyone believes that Dawn can cure everything. But I just put a few drops and then I fill with a sink. You shouldn't use anything harsher than a very mild so the baby shampoo works really good. And you can see how white this is coming out. So I'll do all these and then I'll set them aside to dry.
Good thing about silicone, it doesn't absorb any moisture, so you don't have to worry about waiting for them to dry. Once you pat them dry, they're as dry as they're going to get. So now you got to think about long-term uh, durability and what you can do to extend the life of these lure molds. And one thing I like to do is to use some uh, mold release. But once you've done some casting on one of these lures with uh, resin, you'll slowly notice that the lure mold will start to show signs of pitting. And that is just little micro spots on your resin where it's grabbed onto that surface and it's no longer pliable enough to get released when you pull it off, when you pull that lure body off. And it'll pull a tiny little pin tip sized little hole in it and that will so slowly build. You'll get more and more of those and uh, eventually it gets stiffer on the inside and starts to crack and get ruined. You can prevent a lot of that with just rubbing some mold release into the lure. Let me show you. This is what I use. A Smooth On product. It's a universal mold release. It's not really that expensive. I think it was $11 including shipping uh, for this can and I've had it for a couple of years. I don't use it enough really to worry about the cost. Before I show you my method of putting that on, I'm going to go ahead and label these lures. Okay, so I've got them clean, they're labeled, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this release on the inside. First, you gotta shake this thing up. I'm gonna start with the lure that I make uh, the most of. Uh, this is my fat belly, it's kind of my, my go-to lure. This is my newest mold, and you can see already some damage right there. That's not due to fatigue or use. That was a drop of crazy glue. When you use this spray to prevent sticking, they recommend that you spray on the light coat, let it dry, and then put another coat on. What I do is just give it a light misting. And the way you can tell it's on there is that that nice shiny gloss you had on your silicone goes away. And what I do then is I just rub it in. Make sure that I rub that stuff in to all the little divots and details of the lure body. And I'll do that uh, with everything. And this one has a very deep uh, lip in there. And I'll have to like open that up just a little bit. And make sure I get some of that in there. And it's the same deal. I'll stick my finger in there. And just make sure it's nicely coated. Once I got them nicely coated, I'll use them just like that. I won't reapply the uh, mold release for quite a while. But a good rule of thumb is if it's already dirty and needs to be washed, Wash it, reapply it, and you'll have a longer life of your mold. Thank you for watching, and I hope everyone in Florida and up the East Coast is safe and stays that way. Take care. Catch you next time.